It's a very strong way to start your stream, being on mute. Anyway, uh, yeah, good, good time to start now, I think. Um, Caleb C, thank you very much for seven months. Yes, we've definitely known each other for exactly seven months. I didn't meet you years ago on uh, InfoSec Twitter. Yagindi, Orphus Flow, mostly SMW. Hope that you're all doing well. Uh, curious about the no SRL tag in my stream title. Is there a 6502 emulator writing speedrun category? I wouldn't be surprised um, if there were various people who do like from zero to implementation the fastest. Um, but SRL will automatically pick up speedrunners and put them on their site. So you want to use no SRL tags so you don't put non speedrun content on SRL. Curry and watching me attempt to, uh, to write a 6502. Nice, that sounds like a good evening. Um, I'm gonna be making a korma tomorrow myself. All right, so where am I compared to the last time that you were here and I started using Nest Test? So that means that you've missed exactly one stream and I made almost no progress that stream because I was, I was uh, streaming on like two hours of sleep and it turns out I'm between the streamer tax and the fact that uh, I didn't have enough sleep, I, I made very, very little progress, like an embarrassingly small amount. Um, to the point where it was pointed out to me after my stream that the big problem that I was running into uh, was that I don't I don't know how to count. And so now we should be ready to parse. Yeah, or 6D, 6F. So, um, a big problem that I was running into here is that, uh, is that I don't know how to count. Um, 6F minus 6D. Towards the end of the stream yesterday, I kept on doing that in my head, and I was coming out with, uh, with 1 because I'm not smart. It's very, very important to, to note that the reason that this happened is because of my lack of smart being. Um, 60F minus 60D is, uh, in fact, 2, um, which is a different number from 1. So the entire time uh, I was trying to debug something that didn't exist. Abutu, thank you very much for 26 months. That's true, just 6,476 months away from the big 6502. Not too far to go. So I was, in fact, not setting zero. Is a different problem from not setting... Not setting carry. That makes a lot more sense, honestly. So, what do I need to be looking at here? Actually, I think we do still need to be in log. Make me to seven C seven E nine, please. Thank you. We're doing an and. And should be setting zero, and zero should be unset. That's definitely true. That's correct, Abutu. Nothing exists. 
Egrets, how's it going? That's also true. Zero is fake. Metanoc, hope you're doing well. C72, C79. What is C7EB? Compares. Look at compare. Does compare set that uh, the zero bit? Actually, hey, PL. Look at PLA. Make sure the PLA isn't supposed to set zero. That could, in fact, simplify this a little. Hey, look at that. Pop instruction does affect zero and negative. Okay. So push. It's not going to do anything, but the pop, like the pop instructions, do. Zeklor, how's it going? And Seer Sky. If I tried to match my log output to the nest test log trace, yes. That is in fact uh, why we have um, we've got log test in or uh, nest test log dot in. This is um, part of nest tests log. And we've got nest test log out. Only please. I'm actually not sure why we only have 103 lines of nest test log in the input. I'll fix that later. Um, but yeah. Welcome in. All right, so the 6502 um, opcode cheat sheet uh, didn't mention that the stack instructions should be setting negative and zero. Uh, so that's definitely why the pop instructions don't set negative or zero. I'm going to double check that TXS and TSX uh, aren't meant to as well. PS PXS doesn't set anything. Okay, so it's probably because of the way that the 6502 um, .org cheat sheet is laid out that PHA, PLP, PHP, and PLP, PLA, um, those aren't listed as um, impacting anything, but 
PLA and PLP should be setting negative and negative and carry, or negative and zero. The pushes do not. All right, that's good to know. All right, well that's, now that I know what I'm, what I'm running up against, that's a very, very easy thing to fix. Negative. PLB does? Did I misread that? I must have misread that. That seems wrong. PLB just sets everything. What am I doing? Let's ignore that one and just PLA. Megos Informaticus, welcome in. Uh, yeah, this is, um, this is Imposter and Solver. You're absolutely on the money. I mean, to be fair, PLP does set, um, your processor flags. Just not the way that, um, not the way that I did it right there. This now looks correct. C7E. Eight. Let's break at the PLA. Hey, look at that. Let it run for a little bit longer. We don't have any differences in Yeah, we we outran our available log. Cool. Um let's This and let's let's re
A, X, Y. Processor flag. Stack pointer. Just getting rid of cycles and compute. C6E, let's see if we can do that. Like, we can't. You know. Okay. We have a difference yet? We do. C826. What's the order that I used here? So first is our input, second is output, which is wrong. Thing. Okay. Should be EF or CF instead. Interrupt. Getting interrupt problems. Yeah, Zekor. Um, if uh, if you're interested in these tunes, you should go and give Big Giant Circles some money. Big Giant Circles is rad, and Big Giant Circles also lets streamers use their music without taking their shit down, which is real great. that flag I is set in an interrupt? But I'm actually not sure that I'm doing everything correctly. Let's double check. Oh, okay. So we pulled, so we did a P PLP. Oh, interesting. All right, let's break on C822 and see what's happening. Break on the EA. There's our knob. All right, so, A9. A9 FF, we're gonna load FF to the A register. is compare with 2F. Okay, 2F, yeah. C92. No, first we ended with EF. Why where am I? For C825. Here we go. I completely overlooked where we were. Okay, cool. So now we're at full process, uh, pull the processor flags. So our stack pointer is FA. Oh, this is the weird push, um, push and pull stack. Um, like when you're doing PLP, some things are not set. And I'm not doing that right now, I think. And I think that's what it is. I'm not supposed to set interrupt when you do a PLP. Processor flags, the AD. So it means that zero is not set. Hmm, interesting.
probably the SE opcodes have an issue. Uh, I don't think so. Set carry. Set interrupt. Those, those should be fine. The SE instructions are pretty straightforward, but we, we pushed the accumulator, which was FF, to the stack, and then we did a PLP, so I'm just, I'm doing some, my PLP instruction is messed up. So it's currently anding OXCF. And I think that I'm not supposed to... Do one more thing. So XCF, that's just masking break. Should be ignoring bits 5 and 4. Yeah, it would be nice to have the last two bytes of the stack. Um, from Nest Test. Wait a second. It's AD. currently enabled. So I'm very smart. That's why. Alright, actually I know exactly where this bug is now. just like super duper lose faith in yourself as a programmer? Yeah, me too. Ian. 
Okay, now I know that. We're gonna push. And we're gonna pop. Seems wrong. Run a little bit longer. Kill it. Of course. Maybe, maybe break can never be set, but interrupt can. That would make sense. Uh, Kate, I am anything but elite at programming. Like, I'm, I'm pretty average. I'm okay at programming. I can do a computer on occasion. Like, and that's, that's really it. And one of the reasons that I do these streams is that I want other people to go, hey, if an idiot like Tina can do this, I can probably do it as well. Because you can. This is not something that's out of the realm of anybody else. Like, anybody can do this. That's, that's really the point that I'm going for here. I'm cautiously hopeful. Bad. Uh, let's run to... Let's see how far. We'll jump a few ahead. Let's run until C9... C9... 9-8. Nine, eight, there we go. Okay. Well, that's an interesting bug. Uh, let's see. 36 from 891. Okay. Send off opcode. Really? No, 210. That doesn't make sense at all. False. Do you eight ninety one? Indirect one. wrong. This feels like I shouldn't have to do this, but... That could be an associativity fight. We'll see. Also, like, it took a long time to get there. We were breaking where? Let's see, 
C868. Stop at C8 BB. All right, that was quick. I'm gonna let it run for a few more instructions. We'll see where we're messing up. We actually got past the problem earlier, so that's good. I think we did. C897. All right, so flags should be 6F, flags are EF. After a compare. Except that the comparer had the processor flags at EC. Interesting. Let's take a look at branch instructions. Branch instructions. Affect flags. None. Am I sure I need to, to mask the flags from PHP and PLP? Um, that's a good question. I'm going off of uh, primarily info on 6502.org. But I'm also supplementing that because uh, here's the 6502 assembly uh, Google site has some conflicting information. And in this case, the 6502 assembly Google site uh, indicated that masking was correct. Hey, you're gonna jet. Well, thank you. I hope that you, uh, I hope you had fun hanging out. I don't know. You should really go back into programming in your free time. You do it for a living, but it's not the same. Now that you're done with Tiberian Dawn, you might. It's fun. I really enjoy programming. It's a fantastic hobby. It's something where you can, as somebody with no artistic talent, I get to feel like I'm creating things, and I really, really love it. And yeah, Factorio and Zach Lights are very good. Um, in fact, Zachtronics games, when somebody says, hey, like, what's a good step for me to, to help my kid learn to program because they're interested in it? Um, I often recommend, like, any Zachronics game. Um, uh, Magnum Opus is really good. Um, and uh, Space Pimp is very good. Those don't feel like programming, but they use all of the same, like, brain bits that programming uses. Yeah, Shinsen IO is kind of rough around the edges, but also very, very good. Um, I wouldn't recommend it as a first, like, get somebody into programming game. I, I would recommend it just in terms of, like, you already know that programming is real fun, and you can find the fun in programming without it needing to have a layer of abstraction. Yep, Space Kim teaches you about pipelining. That's absolutely true. Okay. So the compare did set everything correctly. Then I should have been 6F. Just another one where on the next 
the next instruction I'm going to be the correct thing. C897. Nope, I'm just, I'm EF forever. All right. Interesting. Should have been, should have been 6F for a while, and then I should be 2F after that. Is it Opus Magnum? I can never remember the name of it. Like, Magnum Opus is just, it's a thing. Let's see. C899 is where we go. We still end up going to C899. Wait. So we were EC, and we end up 6F. Here we're EC. All right, so that's correct. But we end up E. Setting the negative bit incorrectly? So it is, yeah, it's it's the highest bit, which yeah, we're setting negative. So, doing a compare is 255. setting negative zero and carry. Negative zero, carry. Right, well, that's good. I see. But this negative set is totally wrong. So what we're actually going to do is register plus Mostly, according to all the documentation that I have, uh, yes, the carry bit gets set because it's done in, um, uh, you set all flags as if you're doing a subtraction. You know, by gray tech. Speaking of people who are absolute wizards with the 6502. Is 
this random chip tune mix in or just the song. Uh, I'm I'm playing through uh, Big Giant Circles uh, discography right now. Oh, you meant with that exact compare when A is yeah, that's definitely correct. Um, yeah, what you, what what you're saying there is it's definitely correct. What we're gonna do is we're gonna move this into a domain, uh, into a 16-bit domain. Then we're gonna subtract the value. which should always be bounded to a byte, but just in case it's not. And then we're going to perform an AND, and then we'll shift it over. It's ugly as hell, but should it work? Rising inflection? I think it should work. C8, 7, C8, 9, 3, let's go. 8, 9, 3. Go. Now we are going to branch on plus. Compare. Negative is zero. I like that. So I'll let it run for a couple more instructions. Fill it. Check the log. New problem. Hell yeah. Alright, so load A. It's supposed to be setting some registers. Six up. What are you? Zero. No. Overflow. Well, I definitely should not be setting overflow. We're six up. Do we do we clear overflow on? On a load? Wait. CLV. Why are you not? Okay. Set flag V. Zero. Good. No. I need to I need to see what's going on. We're gonna stop that. T eight A. So B gets clear. Up. No, we set carry. Now we clear. Never cleared. Never cleared B. That's that's your problem right there. Hey, you think maybe this is part of the problem? Apparently, TYA had the same... 98. TLB is supposed to be B8. Thank you. 
SCP exists. It doesn't. Neat. All right. Let's double check all of my flag instructions because apparently I was insufficiently paying attention. All right. CLC. X18. All right. Clearing carry. Great. SEC 38. Setting carry. Good. CLI. Clearing interrupt. CLI 58. Good. SEI. Set interrupt. It's 78. Good. Setting interrupt. Right. CLV clear overflow is BD8. Good. Clearing overflow. Clear decimal CLD. It's DD8. We've got you. And set decimal is FD. All right. Cool. Watch it actually work now. And catch up with chat. This is ugly as hell, but it should work. Rising inflection is a statement that you saw a lot involving 6502. Yeah, fair. Yo, Loon, how's it going? You had a bug in your ISS tracker code that affected hardware only. Fix was replacing a single ROL. ROR, really? Huh. Bizarre. Not used to single bit patches. Yeah. What's our target machine? Well, right now, um, I just want to get the 6502 working. After that, the plan is to implement the NES's PPU and see if we can't make something resembling an NES. We're at the knock. EA. CA2? Yep. Gonna do nothing. I have my mouse in the wrong window, so. Go. 38. We're, we are setting carry. No, we are setting clear. Setting B. Set carry. Clear overflow. Here's B8. Clear overflow. Cool going to load A. Yep. Zero. Going to or A. Zero. I'm gonna branch it not equal. B and E is all about zero flags, so that one doesn't matter. I'm just gonna I'm gonna let this run for a little bit and, and then we'll check on where our next error is because now I'm confident C85 is not where our current area of focus should be. Rad. Well, let's run until CA90. Run until... Let's run until CBA8, and then we're going to watch it jump to the base. 8 CBA8. Jumping to CBAF. And to load Y, 71. We are going to jump to a subroutine at F F931. Oh. It's going to hold down the enter for a little bit. It's true. It's a computer for families. It's not one of those immoral computers that are not for families. They take you away from your family. No. I want to make a computer for families. A family computer, if you will. There we go. C. E. C. 8. Really? JSR is working.
Always with the flags. God, I suck at CPU flags, apparently. So JSR should be resetting me, think. Pushing our instructions, setting the register. Subtracting with carry. Oh, I should be. Let's watch this happen. We will F961. Here is a JSR, CBC6, I'm going to do a subtract with carry, carry is set to 1 already, we're subtracting 41 from 40 with carry, so I think this should be null, pretty sure this should just be a null. There's no, there's no universe in which FF is the correct answer. No, it is the correct answer. But, processor flag could be FB negative. Yeah. Is my process. FB. No, that's my stack one. Dummy. Okay. A4. But it is E4. What am I missing? Zero. Okay. Yeah, this pushed me. Hmm. Nope. Not quite. A. Okay, yeah, that's all for calculating overflow, which was correct. Harry makes sense.
There we go. Hey, you know what's great? I love how the ternary operator has higher precedence than equality checks. That's good. I love that. That's a good feature. That makes me feel happy on the inside and on the outside. All right, let's go again. This should work out. Okay. A is 40. We are at F961, which I think is RTS. Yep, that's an RTS. All right, CBC6. Now we're going to subtract with carry. Carry is set to 1. A is 40. Cool. Your FF. Uh, 0 is set to nothing. Overflow is set to 1. Did we overflow? Negative is set to 1. Yes, we did overflow, so that makes sense. Run it for a few more instructions, double check. Nope. I am E4, I should be A4. Or all. That is. It's overflow. Did we not overflow? Uh, I got bit by it earlier, Seer. Yeah, changing that fixed other bugs early in the stream. Um, yeah. Yeah, I was getting falses out of these comparisons. Which, it might be an interaction um, with the fact that um, we had parentheses doing weird things, which it's not better. Okay, am I misunderstanding something here? So we add the two's complement. Plus our flag. one, negative one, should be OXFF. I feel like this is broken. I need to think about it a sec. Shoot. to think here. Feels... Hmm. Oh, 
Yeah. Did this instead. This makes this makes overflow impossible to catch, I think. So we want to subtract zero, right? Okay, cool. So subtract that would be subtracting one. There we go. So what's weird about this is that this seems to be wrong, which I don't love. Our SBC. SBC is right here. We end up with FF. And our processor flag is A4. Let's take a look at that. Alright, so we are negative, not overflowed. No NMI, no break, of course. Not decimal, interrupt disabled. That's, I doesn't matter. Not carry. I think that we are E4, which just has overflow set in addition. So, interesting. I am clearly misunderstanding the case in which Overflow is meant to happen here. So first thing first, let's drop this. There, we'll set it right here. Because this was giving us the right answer. This was correct to begin with. My 
overflow is wrong. How can I fix that? How am I? I'm doing fantastic. I enjoyed a fantastic marathon recently called Big Bad Gameathon, which I was hosting for like probably half the time. You're exhausted because of Big Bad Gameathon? Well, yeah, I mean, you were running it, so that makes sense. Okay, let's. Let's yoink this. Let's set it side by side and see if I'm like misunderstanding something somewhere. Result negative is going to be true. Original A and B negative are going to be false. And it's one XOR original A, XOR original B. Yes. And original A negative XOR. So, 1 XOR, 0 XOR, 0, so 1, and original A negative, 0 XOR, 1, and 1. Subtly wrong. That's, that's definitely wrong. Rocket Dodger, how's it going? Yeah, it's been a while. Dan was actually running it. My mistake. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's definitely wrong. What am I doing wrong here? Is this same? The same bug should exist here. My truth table, please. Thank you. All right, positive, positive, positive. No, negative, negative, negative. No. Positive plus positive equals negative overflowed. That's not correct for subtraction. That's why.
overflow is Trickier. Okay, I'm trying to do this all at once. I think that breaking this out into multiple steps might help. We're going to rename this Operand Prime. Operand is going to equal Operand Prime. We're just going to invert... Here. I'm going to do value. Now I can use I can re use result and operand separately. Whether or not we're doing the whether or not we're doing the tooth complement conversion before we do all of this actually modifies the outcome of our overflow calculation. Now our overflow calculation, I think, ends up being correct. Okay, cool. I think. Let's try it. Alright, F961. Turn from subroutine. Easy six. Subtract. Carry. And overflow is set correct. That was. way more straightforward than it than I was making it out to be. All right, that's that's kind of the folly of trying to do everything 
in as few steps as possible. So that sort of problem is really easy to overlook. All right, I'm going to hold down enter. We're going to apparently jump between a bunch of subroutines a bit. And let's see where our next problem is. Uh, we don't have one yet. Cool. CC63. Uh, let's move four more pages, five more pages. CD, CD9B. Rad. This is kind of how it tends to go. Like now that the instructions are mostly working correctly, we can walk further and further in. We will jump to CF7A, why not? There we go, CDAE. Only happens once, looks like, again, it's flags. TSX, probably where the problem is. It's TSX. Transfer stack pointer to X. Fair. set negative and zero okay let's take a look well that's going to be why There we go. I actually don't even have to mask anything out because it's already one byte. Yeah, I don't have to mask anything out. And I should fix that here as well. This is pulling directly from a register, which is already bounded to one byte. Again, flags. Arrow. Is the code that I'm testing on anything in particular? Yes, it's a really good test ROM called Nest Test, uh, which was built specifically to test the accuracy of emulators. Uh, it's open source. Let me drop a link in chat. There's no dedicated site, it looks like, maybe. Yeah, it's just under nickmass.com. So I'm just going to drop the entire... the Nest Dev Wiki uh, emulator tests page. Um, but some emulator dev folks who've been hanging out in chat um, recommended Nest Test in particular as being very good. So, TSX. Wait, no, I think we're past that. Now at EMI. 
branch. You know. Tell me your secrets. Branch, if minus. should not be changing anything. So. Not RTI. Processor status work in the program counter from the stack, which means that I probably double check the interrupts returning with RTI will implicitly pull the save status register from the stack, automatically set by the CPU when higher triggered, stored to its previous state by RTI. Eros404, how's it going? This video game looks cool. Yeah, it's it's a real exciting one. flags already in this pop. We've maxed out this. I was 45. It needs to be 65. I think that this fixes it. So we can even just do that same run again. Check our log. Sure didn't fix it. Just my two bit again here. NMI. Right, B flag. Q and Inamon, and two instructions, PHP and break, push the flags to the stack. And the byte pushed, five is always set to one, if four is, uh, is one if from an instruction, zero if the interrupt line was full. This is the only time and place where the B flag actually exists, it's not the status register itself. 
before the copy that's written to the stack. Makes sense. To instructions, PLP and RTI pull a byte from the stack and set all the flags. They ignore bits 5 and 4. Well, that should be CF then. The only way for an IRQ handler to distinguish an IRQ from a break is to read the flags byte from the stack and test bit 4. Makes sense. Let me double check. This, according to the good run, should be 65, which means that bits in the high nibble, 2 and 4 should be set, uh, which is uh, in the high nibble, it would be bit um, 1 and 2. These two, right here. Overflow should be set. Our unused NMI should be set. It's interesting. Did RTI just be setting that bit? Am I masking wrong? That's right. You write code and run it. It's an adventure to see what actually happens. So this bit is expected to be set. By the RTI. Lucas, thank you very much for the one gay bit. It's excellent. And thank you for the good luck. Just supposed to be setting that bit? I mean, fuck it, let's run it and find out. It'll break somewhere. CEFD. We we moved real far ahead, so maybe that's correct. Sooner or later it's gonna break, and then I'll have to really figure out what's going on. Flags. Uh should be 67, I have 65, which means...
the zero bit was not set after a LSR. SR with A equals 1, end up at 0, it definitely should be 0. Is it equals 0? If so, to 1. Wait. I'm doing something wrong. I must be doing something wrong. Show me a lesson. Wait, no, we definitely shouldn't be zero. Okay. Yeah, not after load A1. CEFD. Should be 67, still 65. It's after LSR. Alright. <laughs> the latest Actronics game. It's just GCC and Notepad. Hell yeah. I mean, Glitch Garden, if you've been hanging out here, I'm mostly going WTF at code that I haven't touched in a while. We're only 10% of the way through Nest Test. Of course, we started out substantially less. Still. Alright. Reading our operand. Hey. Wait, 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 wait. We're doing LSR on A. That's why. Looking in the wrong spot for something to be broken. New problem, hell yeah.
flag should be 24, flag is left as A4. Let's see. Here, processor flag is A5. AA, definitely. Oh, that's a correct bit. Alright, so. Negative? I have negative set here somewhere? Should negative be set from LSR? I don't think so. Alright, so the Google site says no. Sixty-five oh two. Um says yes. Wait, so it should just always clear negative for log logical shift, right? All right. probably just start with scrapping the whole collision system. I wouldn't worry too much about that. Collision detection in games is actually impossible. Oh yeah, up here I have negative set to zero. Seven. Okay, if we move 10 instructions every run, that's real good. All right, arithmetic shift left A. Hey, what you want to bet? I'm doing the same, same weird shit. Like, I'm not setting things properly in A. Look at that. I definitely wasn't. So, shifting left, one. Result is... Carry to ninth bit. Calculated whether or not we're negative. Salt equals zero is salt. Setting register A. Do the result. Comparison against a literal 5D. How can collision be real if hitboxes aren't real? A raving loon in my chat asking the real questions.
Okay, well, rewriting A from a comparison is weird. Let's figure out what the hell I'm doing. C9? Yeah, C9 5D. Wait. Oh, okay, okay, okay. see. All right. F equals 400. So let's stop at CFFO. Let's also change my dump parameters for right now. I need to be watching the 400 page. Take the whole page. 5D. Okay, cool. That is what I expect to see. You're at CFFO. We just loaded, we're about to load X into zero, or zero into X, cool. We're gonna load A. FF, uh, X offset, which gives us 0400. But we ended up with value there. All right, so our load A, Y offset, or X offset is definitely wrong. It's X A1 opcode. with indexed zero page operations as they are subject to wrap around. We indirect or are we? We are indirect. me. 
<laughs> Excellent. Check it out. Indirect is indirect is always going to be zero. Pay. All right. Hey, Empire, thank you very much. I'm glad if people enjoy watching me bang my head against some code and occasionally have something good happen. So I think that indirect, because we are hitting the zero page, I'm not calculating the, the wrap correctly. PC plus register X We should be loading zero into X. Yep. A1 FF is load indirect FF X. X is currently zero, so no offset. Check these notes. this again. We are currently at CFF2, which is load address FF X offset, which Doing. 
now it's perfect. An indirect Y. There. So that's fine. Indirect Y. on that so I'm gonna leave it alone until something breaks this should fix the current opcode graph CFFO I'm gonna load zero into X I'm gonna load a FF X offset it's 5d is now we're hoping for so let's let it run. Break out. A hey, new problem. We're a thousand instructions into this. This is real good. All right. So once again, flag. God, flags are going to be the death of me, I swear. Oh no, actually... In addition to flags, I'm setting the wrong value in an accumulator. Hell yeah. Alright. So, opcode 21. Yeah, this is the ultimate game of CTF. Correct the flag. How much of the logs am I am I uh, passing now in percentage? Thirteen percent. So we're over one tenth of the way. My expectation is that, like I said, as more and more instructions become fixed, the rate at which we progress should hopefully uh, correspondingly increase. I think that perform and is probably where this bug is. Let's watch this one play out. EO75, so we're going to stop at F7. So F7, F5, let's return. EO73. So we are. Currently, x is equal to zero. We are going to load. A is equal to B8. So then, 82. Okay, so that. At 82, since both three have.
he reloaded a EF, stored it at 0300. So I'm going to change my dump again so that we can see 0300 before we do this. So there's our EF, we expect to see at 300. So we return. We are now going to load A. Or no, is F8. Return, we're going to AND A. The bite at, so 82. So 0, 0, 0, that's the address that we're going to read in order. So we are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then we're going to be reading from 82 and then 83. So 82 is 0, 0, that's our low byte. 83 is 0, 03, that's our, our high byte. So we should be loading, or we should be doing an AND from 0, 0300 is EF. So we should end up with E8. Get a zero. zero. So, perform hand is not the problem here. Our upcode 21. It's indirect X again. The thing that I just changed. Turn. Now, doing an offset from X. 82 bytes. Ah, okay. I see what I did wrong. We're returning an address, which makes sense. But we're taking that as our operand instead of operand. This should all work. Except for immediate. It does break. should be reading this address. Let's figure out what's going on here. 
Next up is our hand instruction 2182. Anything get printed at all? Hmm. And I just realized exactly what's happening. Hey, how about that? I didn't correctly set the opcode. So this is indirect Y. Should be 31, not 21. As long as this works, we'll take a break. Five minute stretch break. And it did. That's great. All right, I'm gonna stretch my legs, pop off my water. Everybody else, you should all do the same. Um, which has made it so that uh, everybody who joins in gets pre-roll ads if you don't run ads. So I'm just gonna click watch an ad. None of you wanna watch an ad. So now's a really, really good time for you to stretch your legs, walk around a minute. We'll be back in about five and hopefully gonna get a bunch more of this working tonight.
Got a bunch of chat to catch up on. Maybe it just becomes more and more obscure edge cases each time. Yeah, I mean, that's my expectations. That's what it's going to become. Eventually, I'm going to start fixing edge cases, which uh, probably trigger us, like trigger errors earlier in the execution of the program until I get everything working correctly.
couple of comments, Faizu and, and Witches, indicating that you understand very little of what's going on, but you find it interesting to watch. Um, a, thank you very much. I'm glad that it's fun to watch, irrespective of, like, where your, um, your level is in terms of, like, how much of this you necessarily grasp. Uh, but I do want to point out that the goal of any of my text streams is to be didactic. If I just wanted to write something that was going to work perfectly ahead of time, number one, I would be leaning on, um, <laughs> I, I'd, I'd be leaning on existing work in the open source domain. I wanted to tackle this from zero, kind of to give an idea of how these, you know, how somebody might approach this uh, completely naive. And then also, I want these to be didactic. So no matter where your level is, ask questions. The more that I can do to help other people, you know, get interested in this or, you know, just to understand a tiny bit better things that go on, like, that's going to throw me. That, that'll be so, that'll make me so happy. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, some egrets. Um, I also understand nothing, like, just period. In a general sense, I have no understanding of the world around us. Metabot, you're trying to follow along as well as you can. It's making more sense than it used to. That's awesome. Hopefully this will help you write a small Python module for 65.8.16 analysis. Now that's a really cool idea. Uh, Dimbalas. Uh, is this Swift? No, I'm I'm writing in Ruby. So to give an idea of what you're looking at, um, we have written a relatively small domain-specific language. The goal of this particular DSL is that I wanted to be able to describe in a somewhat declarative sense. Uh, an emulator in a, in a generic way. So this DSL aims to make writing emulators relatively declarative. Um, there's definitely plenty of warts, but for the most part, it's, it's doing its job relatively well. So the first of my emulator streams, in fact, the, the first two of them were building out and then kind of refining the DSL. And then after that, it went to implementing the 6502 within that DSL. So you can see we're defining um, helper methods and then we'll define opcodes. So at this point, we've got a DSL defined. We've got a CPU described by that DSL. And now, I wrote a super quick and hacky, um, like, it's not even a debugger because it lacks most of what we care about in a debugger, but it lets us watch memory at, you know, specified addresses. It lets me watch what opcode is currently about to be run, etc. cetera. Um, and it lets us step through uh, after a breakpoint that you can set on the command line. And so I am walking bit by bit through a, a test ROM called Nest Test, designed for testing NES emulators. The CPU that I implemented was the Rico variant of the 6502, which doesn't actually uh, have the traces for um, binary coded decimal math um, connected. So no decimal mode math, but otherwise it's a 6502. And we're just, we're walking through step by step this verification wrong. So let's, let's walk as far as D149. See if we can get that far in. Probably not. Let it run. Kill it. It's going to write out a log. I wrote a real, again, quick and hacky parser that's going to take a look at individual logs, it's going to zip them, and then it's going to give us the first mismatch uh, between 
the no good nest test run that is given uh, by the author of nest test and the first deviation that the emulator that we're running so far no deviations that's great let's go five pages further 73 This is great. 308. F9D8. Nice. Seven four. All right, well, I think that we found a bug here. Cool. All right, um... In two ten. It's the first, like, major bug that we ran into today was in two ten. Neat. So for those of you who don't know, uh, the P method is really great in Ruby. So if I have uh, some array, so one, two, three, four, I can do a puts on the array. And it's just going to like write each individual um, element on a line. However, that's only one way uh, to springify this. So you can see. We also have this 2s method, um, which in this case is identical to the inspect method, but not always true. So there is a method, which is just p for short, um, which is equivalent to puts object.inspect. So it, it just dumps that to the, the screen you can actually inline these calls because it re it returns the object. It's a uh, from the standpoint of a programmer, it's an identity method. So, for example, we could do do plus five six seven. We can do y equals that. So we put the original array but y is actually equal to the original array with 567. So for anybody who doesn't know when I'm dumping all of this the screen, that's y. Now realistically here it's almost guaranteed that what we're going to see is uh, we're just going to get a false. Yeah, a false. We'll see what's up. So you can see, actually, where we're flashing a... It's a nil. Interesting. Okay. All right. Bitwise map. Why does nil have... Neat. I'm not sure that I would have a um, an ampersand method on nil class, but... 
I'm sure there's a good reason for it. Yeah, it's really great for uh, printf style debugging. I really quite like it. Where are we coming in from? 896. Six. Right. So it'll be 893. Bus read. Indirect Y. Turn this out again. All right, well, that seems reasonable. So I think that this is the first um, indirect Y that we've seen. Double check, make sure that this is B. This was D940. We're 33% of the way through the run, though, and that's pretty okay. You just beat your first daily challenge on Monster Train. Nice. Monster Train is real fun. Right. So, we're loading a 97 offset one. Should equal FFFF. Operand 65587. Okay, so I'm not completely off my rocker. That's good. Okay. Weird. Y's offset is 34. Oh, I see. And the bus definitely can't read that. Um, so what I'm going to do, if this should work, is that because we're going to be returning a 16-bit address. So that should now at least not blow up. There we go, DA33. Hey, we got there. Okay, so 
D957. Right here. We're gonna load Y. Number 55. Cool. We're going to load A. At FF. So at 46, offset Y. Should equal 0146. Let's, let's switch up our dump and watch the 100 page. Rerun. E957, we're good. 0146. Five, nine. There's our load A. Should be 100 page 46, so 014. Oh no, no, I should be watching the 200 page. I just don't know how to read numbers. Numbers are hard, y'all. Should be loading 12. And we're definitely not. Okay. What is that? That is load A. So it's B1. Thing first, let's make sure that got the right um construction there we go. 325. Is that 245? That doesn't feel like it. Five eighty one. Getting O one six. My E points. I'm now confused. I need to look up the description of indirect again. I'm clearly misunderstanding exactly what I'm supposed to be doing.
bet that it's the same thing. One million percent bet that it's the same thing and this fixes it. Nine. And now load A. Now we're 12. All right, cool. Run for a couple more instructions. We're back to passing. Cool. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Alright. 39, 3391. FAO. Cool. Oh. It's gonna be real clear where, where stuff went wrong here. D7, DB7. Here I'm doing a wrap around that I don't have to do. This should not be wrapping. the dump to show me 200 page. I'm already watching the 200 page. Perfect. Maybe 70. Not where I need to be. Yep. Stop at DB7 instead. I think that stops before that runs. I hope it does. All right, cool. All right, so DB7E is correct. 6C0002. 6C0002. So let's double check. First thing first, let's actually double check this. Let's 
funziona. So we should be loading from 200. Is B7E. Oh, ha! Yeah, I'm actually just real not smart. Huh? There we go. Now enter for a little bit after this hits the break point, and then we're going to continue. Cool. We're continuing as expected. DC 03, let's go. Should have been 03. Ah, let's see. Stop at DBB5. FF02. So we should be jumping to OF uh, uh, 2. We should be loading FF02. We should be adding one, get hex 300, and that should be where we jump to. Am I watching the 200 page right now? Yeah. to FF. Read this. Read 03. Should give us 300, which is where we jumped to. Let's check 60 real quick. I'm already here. Should this be wrapping? again. DBB5 is our jump instruction. Alright, we go to 03 this time. That's better. A9AA should just be load A, AA. And then 60 is a return. up at DBAE. Awesome. All right, we can continue. D 
DC 03. Let's go. Yep, got another one of these. I have a feeling that I'm going to be seeing this a few more times as, as we go through and debug this. Not a big deal. All right, uh, we are coming from 880 this time. Oh, hey, I don't need you anymore. This time it's absolute why it's breaking. I didn't check anything over here. I didn't change anything over here, so it's probably going to be absolute why that changes again. Thy Lord Rune, how's it going? Let's double check. What am I doing here? All right. So we read where to read the address from. Shift our most significant light over. Operand is false. So it is going to be absolute one. Gonna do this for both of these right away. I don't need to wait to know that it's gonna happen with um, Absolute X as well. All right, that's new. on emulation code as well. Oh, that's awesome, Rude. doing instruction decoding. Well, now that I have hit my next breakpoint, and so far we're bug-free uh, on this run, um, now's a good time to give you a quick rundown of what's gone on over the last uh, gosh, month, month, month and a half almost. All right, so we started out uh, the first stream and a half to two streams about there um, was building a uh, domain-specific language, uh, which aims at 
describing in a relatively, not perfectly um, declarative, but semi-declarative fashion, uh, describing CPU or uh, more broadly just architecture that you might emulate. So it's not only CPU per se, but the bulk of the work is in the CPU DSO. So then after that was done, and I used like just a stupid like four opcode, you know, quote unquote CPU, just enough to be able to like multiply without a multiply instruction. So, you know, I wanted to be able to loop, do addition, so on, branch. Um, then after that, uh, the next thing that uh, I started on was building out a emulator for, and I have it labeled as MOS 6502, but realistically it's, it's the, um, it's the Rico part because it doesn't have BCD um, addition and subtraction, uh, which is the difference between the original 6502 and the Rico chip that was used in the NES. So working through that, um, at this point, I built just a really crappy little, not even technically a debugger because it, it gives us a single breakpoint that I can run until, and you know I can I can dump a static region of memory that I have to change uh, in code. But it's enough. It's enough to be able to monitor what's going on and to work through the nest test um, test ROM, which is just brilliant. The nest test ROM is so good. And that's where we're at now. We are, I guess, 37% of the way through the nest test run. Um, whether that is representative of 37% of the way done through verifying this emulator or not remains to be seen. You're nowhere near that right now. You're just working on a generic memory interface right now that can accommodate MMIO. Well, MMIO is usually implemented in software, like you're, you're using a memory mapping to represent IO so that you can uh, allow for IO ops to, um, to take place concurrent to doing other processing. Um, in terms of that, like just building out a generic memory interface should be relatively straightforward. Um, I think that you're already on Discord, but if you're not, you should chat about the stuff that you've been doing. Um, it's a real good topic. You have a tree representing the address space and mapping memory across extents. And each extent can be direct mapped or accessed through a function pointer. Yeah, that makes sense. The code is, is kind of in an embarrassing state at the moment. Well, that's one of the reasons that I'm doing this on stream, so that people can get a sense that 99.9999 at minimum, it's probably substantially um, more than that, but at least that percentage of code out there is code that you should be, code that would be embarrassing. And that realistically, we should probably have a much higher threshold or feeling embarrassed at the code that we write. Still trying to decide whether you want to use an ABL tree or a slay tree for accommodating both. I mean, as long as that doesn't substantially uh, explode your problem space. Accommodating both is a reasonable choice, I'd say.
Oh no. F8. Where's the next RTS? E2 D8 is where. We're also kind of cheating using a bunch of pearl strips to kick out a lot of repetitive C code. I'm not sure I understand how that's cheating. That sounds like working smarter. Definitely off code of Uh, me. I need to look up what 0444 and 64 are because it's not in the 6502.org um, cheat sheet. Serena Dragoon, how's it going? Are we hacking the internet? No, I can't even hack a single CPU. This is terrible.
Well, it's definitely an illegal lock. start looking up the prime opcodes. and 6-4 are all two-byte knots. Okay, cool. is a bummer. So I'm not actually sure how many cycles this is meant to take. That kind of sucks. Unofficial two by pops. So I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna assume that it's four, even though it'll also advance PC by one. Yeah, uncharted territory. And unfortunately, the Nestev wiki also doesn't appear to have um, doesn't have it documented. For the most part, like there's a ton of knobs. There, there's an absolute ton of knobs in the illegal opcodes, which is interesting. See not let's just get the two byte knots no change. The four 
Ursula. 64. 44. 64. I think I'm going to do this by column, which means that we're going to be ordering it by least significant bit first, which is fine. Sort of. This is not immediate. It's... Go for 44, 64. Next column. Nothing in the eights. OC. and F. Nothing in plus 18. Interestingly, it's like every single one of these plus 14s is also Represented by plus eighteen. Clear on the difference between that and the X, though. May, in fact. You know, there's our plus fourteens. Not sure. Oh wow, OC. It's a three by knot. here. Unaid. Oh wow, yep. There's an ops over in 1A as well. Those are just not so, so that's nice. It's like not even advancing. You see addition one three five seven Dia. It's 
business. That's going to screw up the debugger, so that. I mean, it doesn't screw it up yet, but... Well, it does look like we have some O2 as well. That, that's going to be over here. So 1357DF with a C, those are all 3 byte knots. Did I miss those? Huh. The Nest Dev Wiki actually lists those as different functions. Doing a bit, doing a jump. I think that we're going to leave it as is right now. And we'll see how far we get. like nothing's changing. Oh, it's because it's a bit A. Okay, so yeah, that is... Maybe not. No, no, we should. And also, oh wait, no, one C. Not, 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 not. Yep. and call them in. Oh, brilliant. Thank you so much. Yeah, this is not where I was looking. Um, I'm actually on the Nest Dev Wiki, the CPU unofficial opcodes. Thank you so much for the cycle counts. Also, everybody who's here, if you're not already following, 
get text me out. I'm making a mistake. Ram. It's ROM hacking. Really good at crosswords. Like, really, really good at crosswords. Yeah, the nest the nest dev wiki is just fantastic. Let's go four. Let's start here. It's three. Fourteen. Oh really? Fourteen. I didn't even have that one in. You know what? Change of plans. I am fixing the order. I was going column-wise, that was a mistake. use the list as it stands here. So. Now they can be in order. It's great. Just every... Yes. Go through seven, ending in four. Go one, go one, three, four, five, no two. implementing all of the illegal knobs, so yeah, yeah, apparently I am. My original intent was to get everything working with the regular operations first, but uh, it turns out that the, uh, the, the NES, um, the NES test ROM just uses illegal op codes. All right. Oh, four. Three cycles. Fourteen is four cycles. Thirty four, also four cycles. Thirty 
44 is 3 cycles. 54 is 4 cycles. And then 64, 3, 74, 4. We get to 80. All right, so 80 is two cycles. Okay. So we're 82, 89, and C2. 82, 89, C2. Great. B4 is arg x. It's four cycles. D2s. Not even supposed to be T2. They're supposed to be D4. E2. F4. Okay. D4, F4 are four cycles. It's our ARG X. Cool. Nops, we have one A. Let's see, one A, three A, five A, seven A, D A, F A. Great. Let's so go above the double no ops. It's not. These are all too great. Then we have triple up no ops. So OC. And the rest of these are actually absolute X, absolute X offset, so I don't even have to do the... In fact, I can just do absolute and then absolute X. Great. Amazing. So you are four. You are all going to be. Four plus extra. We are just double checking here. 1C, 3C, 5C, 7C, DCFC. Not D4. D4, we're not, we're not there yet. Already have you. Too late.
think. All right. Hi, Lord Ruth. You eventually want to do a 6502 implementation yourself? Oh, that's rad. Super glad if this is helpful. So we went off the path at B5 or so. Five. Uh, the P545, which is another illegal opcode. So you can see right here that asterisk means that opcode's illegal. We've done more moral, more opcode crimes. We've done, we've done computer crimes, y'all. Accumulator X. Load accumulator and X register with memory. Okay, let me look at output of that. Alright, so it's indirect X, that's fine. Okay, so both A and X get set to 55. Go ahead and implement LAX now. A7, B7, AF, BF. LAX, single argument. Here we are in the view. So this is zero page. Break on an A. We broke on an A three. Really? Okay, and that's indirect. Indirect uh, addressing.
Let's just go ahead and fill all of these out. Not a big deal. All right, we've got one, two, three, four, five. Seven. B7. Error page one. Why? It's not incur a penalty ever. We do take four cycles, I assume. Yep, four. Salute. Salute. You take four cycles. Absolute Y. Y does incur extra. It's almost enough code that I feel the desire to build a helper, but I'm not gonna. You want to know. Yep, okay. A3, that's what we broke on. Never incurs a penalty. It does not. Direct Y, on the other hand, will incur a penalty.
What is illegal opcodes anyway? Like, it wasn't intended to be implemented, but throwing it to CPU does something predictable. Yes, so the way that the 6502 works, uh, each of these hex numbers, uh, I'm gonna make this super, super visible. So let's say we've got an opcode, um, well, here, the, the one that I just implemented, opcode A3. So that is 163 in decimal, base 10, numbers that we normally count with because we've got 10 fingers and toes. In terms of uh, binary, what that represents is lowest two bits, brought high, and then on the upper nibble, a pattern of 1010. So we've got four bits total that are active and then four that are inactive for this specific opcode. With the 6502 and a lot of simple CPUs, each one of those bits corresponds to a single wire that's brought high or brought low. So what happens is you set all of those wires on, you, you set those pins high or low as appropriate on your CPU. And then you bring the, I actually don't know on the 6502, um, you either bring the clock pin high and then low, or the opposite. One of those two things happens. And each time that you bring the clock high and low, each time that you cycle it through, what that's going to do is it, it actually sets up this Rube Goldberg machine that kind of runs inside the CPU. It's easy for us, from this perspective, to kind of look at the CPU as this thing that like you put a number into and then a new number comes out. But there's actually a ton of action going on across the electronics that are inside the CPU. And then eventually an answer will come out um, and it will write that answer to the bus in some way. Or maybe it'll change a register, that the memory that's internal to the CPU. Or in the case of LAX, we're changing two registers, two bits of internal memory, uh, two bytes of internal memory, as it were internal to the CPU without writing anything to the bus. But each one of those wires that you bring high or low, those all correspond to part of that machine, part of that Rube Goldberg machine that gets kicked off when it starts running the instruction. So for things like this, all of the illegal opcodes were things that, as you said, they did something predictable because the electronics inside is connected, like whether or not it was in their original manual. P598, can't convert false into integer. This is actually a breakage in nest test. That's that's a new one. Um, cool. Let's take a look. A7 that I'm doing here. It's A3, not A7, right? Let's see, A767. That one should be immediate. says that it's zero page. Let's just 
Let's double check what's going on here. Cool. E598. A is zero. Something weird going on here. Let's see. Do have a breakage. Okay, that's at least something for us to fix. E547. Lags. Oh. Yeah, I bet we're not setting any. I totally ignored that I should be setting negative and zero points. That's fair. If you'd ever like to see the Rube Goldberg machine, the 6502 in action at the circuit level, check out visual6502.org. That sounds super cool. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bookmark that. E Indy, thank you very much. All right, well, well, let me double check the knots just to make sure. All right, no status flags for you. No status flags for you. No the knots. Okay, good. So LAX is the first thing that needs to be setting status flags. We are now officially We're gonna start we're gonna extract this logic one thing. LAX should set negative, should set zero. Oh gosh, binder news. 
I've got real bad news for you in terms of um, a lot of older video games, uh, which made strong assumptions about the controller design that would be at play and whether or not left plus right at the same time uh, behaved as logically as, as you think it might have. I definitely prefer this to the previous break. So, 317. Interesting. Operand is nil class, called from 1593. A7, okay. figure out what's up with indirect one. It's gonna break again, that's fine. Yeah, Sky, um, it's your Sky. Uh, Zelda 2 is broken in an interesting way. Um, Dead Infinitum. For some reason I thought that I said hello to you earlier today, but yo, how's it going? Thirteen O two two. Two two D E. Interesting address. B five nine. X sixty seven. A was 87. A7 is not Y indirect. That's B3. Starting to move into sloppier mistakes territory, which is a bummer. E5, 6D. Let's take a look at that. So after the LAX, we are loading everything correctly. Processor state should be A4, so it should be negative. And then the rest of the bits that I don't want to memorize. So it should be negative. No. Currently two four. Alright, so negative makes sense. Like I said, definitely in sloppy mistake territory. We're 58-ish percent of the way through the test run, which is real good. Let's go to E1 or E8 1E. 
We're gonna break. We're gonna break at least at E818. I don't know if there's an unimplemented illegal op earlier than that. Let's find out where. E759. SAX. Alright, let's let's implement SAX. And X register with the accumulator. Store result in memory. Zero page, zero page Y, indirect X, and absolute. All right. Seven. This is zero page. It's three cycles. Accumulator store in memory. Okay. Which is our address. Result. SAX should be setting in and Z. I'm pretty sure that all of the illegal op codes on the 6502 work on the 65816, don't they? I could be wrong, but my understanding was that the 65816 was fully compatible with the 6502, including broken op, or not broken, illegal op codes. It's good to me. to fix them? Do they end up one cycle knots or something? Well, depends on, it depends on a lot of things. Most modern CPUs define 
undefined opcodes as an error. If you have the, um, like, if you try and bring a lot of, you know, just random um, pins high on a modern CPU, um, if you manage to uh, end up somewhere that is not a defined opcode, uh, you'll introduce an error state to the CPU, which is good. So that way, you know, you don't, like, jump somewhere random in memory and, you know, let's be real, 99% of the time you end up in in legal opcodes on an Intel CPU anyway. But uh, the 65816 filled most of them with actual opcodes. Okay. That, that makes some amount of sense then. So we've got three more SAX. Why? I think zero page Y does not get extra. Nice. I'm going to take four indirect X. Also does not. Incur a penalty. I'm going to take six. Absolute. Get those right? Did I actually? I didn't. I super didn't. I didn't write in the opcodes. Let's fix that while the other thing runs and definitely crashes. 8393? No, beat up. ran into a case earlier where some kind of copy protection intentionally ran an undefined x86-64 opcode that didn't exist prior to SSE 4. But on modern AMD CPUs, it's actually defined, so now the copy protection will always just kick you out. I mean, what do you say to that? It's amazing. It's great. So SAX, score X. Oh my gosh, my flags are super screwed. E6. Should be negative. And E6 is what it should be, 6-4 is what I've got.
Okay, so it is two unset bits. Negative and something else. Not carry. Negative and I'm definitely doing something wrong here. No. Uh, e759. E757 is what we needed to break. Make sure that this is, in fact, correct. Twenty-two. Okay. You write that. And 17 is easy enough. Only two. Okay, so that number is correct. Why is processor thinking? Should be E6. What am I messing up? And X register with the accumulator. Store the result in memory. Eight seven nine seven eight three eight zero. Check these numbers. Eight seven nine seven eight three eight. Yeah. Also CB. Is slightly different. And X with accumulator, store the results in X, then subtract byte from X without borrow. I don't think that that's what we were running into here. No, Root, don't worry about being in and out. I hope that your dinner is delightful. There we go. Should be broken. Yep. So, E759. Right where we are. This is 8349. Eight, 
Indirect X. Yep. That said, um, I'm going to rename this because we've got multiple things that are labeled as SAX, I think. Oh, uh, wait, no. Okay, as long as I stick inside this. Other one. AXS or SBX. We have an SBX. No. Let's see. S. BX is CB. Not part of this test. Okay. That's not a problem then. We are doing this wrong. I guess let's watch the 400 page to make sure that we're at least storing shit correctly. Storing at 0489. I mean, that looks like the right number. That's what I expect. Simulator's 3E, X is 17, Y is 44. Our processor flags are not, they're not what I expect. Is this our first SAX? It is, it's our first SAX. real, I'm not sure that I understand exactly what SAX is doing. correct is ending the accumulator in X yes okay. I keep saying SAX and you keep thinking the the Metroid Samus X yeah doesn't make sense to me. I'm probably missing something really, really obvious.
there's no way, right? Like, this is the stupidest thing if, it, if this is what they're testing on. But even then, E6 sets negative and zero. And yeah, that, it doesn't even make sense because it's a two-byte address. We're getting an address, not anything else. This is just the address line, which is 16 bits. So it wouldn't be doing anything on that. See, let's let's see if the Google machine has anything about opcode eighty three. Oh, interesting. Seeing on another website that it's listed as not actually impacting any uh, processor flags. That's true. It's a work. Okay, cool. That's great. That's good. All right, so that is just a bug in or an inaccuracy, potentially, in the nest dev undocumented opcodes um, form, which, hey, at least it's not me. At least I'm not screwing something up, so that's good. We're in super duper undefined territory here, so... I can't be too mad. Jump to E952. This is gonna crash at some point because we're testing a bunch of undefined ops. Yep. E8D. See, really? Oh, S 
SVC is literally just another immediate mode subtraction. CP. Okay. Subtract one from memory. No boy. You write it back. Okay. According to this, it touches just carry according to other lists that I have, it touches a lot of things. Zero, carry, and negative. I'm gonna touch carry, that means that I do have to. Thank you. 
Let's see if I can shed a little bit of light here. EB. All right, well, EB would be negative. And you're not setting negative. So I think that this is probably correct. We'll find out. It's going to be easy to change anyway. Six cycles. Let's loop. Let's wind. cycles and then X and Y on both. Seven. Indirect X and Y are both eight. So, zero page X is D7. CF is absolute. So, X is DF. So, Y is DB. Indirect X, C3, and then D3. Absolute Y. X, absolute, absolute X, which I believe is our first. Yep. This is another, yep, good. Oh, we didn't break. Let's see. Still a 930. 6465. Did I not meant to touch carry after all? No.
When would we have care here? Would have carried if this was a zero. Then we would also be negative. Hmm. Let's see. Decrementing B B. B is eleven. Alright. Maybe it's the result. Nine Ooh, we should be A5. We're actually 27. Nooster, how's it going? Binary number, welcome in. Good to see you both. We are, I will admit, getting pretty close to uh, done for the day, but not there just yet. Well, maybe then, once again, the text file is wrong and other text file that I have is correct. We'll figure it out. If so, this should work now. It's true. We're doing illegal opcodes. AKA computer friends. E930. Ah, uh, we've taken a step back. So you were negative. the music? The music is um, Big Giant Circles. It's rad as hell and you should give them money. Now we're back to E9. E Same story. Should be A5. 2-7. Figure this out. Wait, should we be A5? If we should be A5. So the correct answer has negative set, fair. This two flag set has carry set, does not have zero set.
negative and zero once again. Well, let's take a look. PCP isn't listed as being unstable. And then compares the result with the A register. Cool. That is easier. That, that makes things make more sense. Just call perform comparison. Hell yeah. Yo, Andy AMO. How's it going? Ampersand, welcome in. Uh, yes, I'm writing Ruby. That is correct. Uh, welcome in, everyone. I'm Tina. I do speed runs for the most part, but every so often I also uh, do programming because programming is the cool thing for nerds to do, and that's me. I'm I'm a nerd. What does programming? Okay. That got us further. Further-ish. All right. 27, I had 25 set. That means that zero should have been set, I believe. that either. Next, look at the 600 page. Just 
watch that. So we should be stopping for E9 P. E9 9. No, Sanatakai, how's it going? Yeah, working on a um, 6502 emulator. This will eventually become probably an NES emulator. It's very lazy. And that's an easy thing to do whilst being lazy. So, 0647. 0. 1, 2, 4. 5, 6, 7. We should become FF. Yep. Mix the contents of memory, location, and then compare the result with the A register. A is an FF. But we definitely should be setting zero. to me that it's wrong. Have I done wrong? Value equals register. That's literally correct, though. That is what it should be. Since Andy just rated, I guess we're going to push for a few more percent. I'll try and get 70% of the way through verifying this uh, emulator. Let's go to EAD5. You're all at a really, really exciting part of this development process, by the way. As we are at the point where it's time to implement and verify illegal opcodes. We're doing computer crime, it's great. But because of that, I haven't implemented most of these opcodes, so the emulator's crashing a ton. I've, I've come to realize that Having the program that you wrote crash live on stream—it's a big, uh, it's a big, uh, it's a, it's a crowd pleaser. People like it. People like it a lot when you're doing something illegal, like doing an illegal instruction, and then it blows up in your face. B A O. So ISB is the next one. It's also called ISC. So first it inks the contents of a memory address and then it SBCs the result from A. I bet none of you realized that we call ISB.
Yeah, it turns out the 6502, apparently a CISC processor, who knew? Indirect. Okay. Check. What's that? Zero page. Yep. Yep, it's absolute. It's way down on my list. We should do P7 first at zero page. Why would Nintendo even allow these legal operations? It's a good question. With as litigious as Nintendo is, you would think that they would have cracked down on this. And yet here we are. So I'm willing to bet BCP and IS. The same options are available to me, so I'm just gonna blink. It's B, is that right? Six six seven seven eight eight seven seven. Oh, my DCP was. Wrong. Oops, this was supposed to be eight. Egg on my face there. It's just a matter of changing the opcodes. He said. F7. PF. Absolute. FF. So next offset. FB for absolute Y offset. And E3, F3 for indirect X and Y. is already a value, so it's perfect. Yo, Freeze, thank you very much for the 22 viewers. Welcome in, everyone. I'm Tina. I feel like most of the people who hang out in Freeze's chat probably know me. Yeah, I do speedruns, not very well. I also program, not very well. 
sometimes I, uh, I play Among Us. Turns out I'm kind of okay at that. We're kind of kind of wrapping up for the evening, but seeing how many of the uh, the crime op codes I can get implemented. Hey, Sten, you're new here. Came from the freeze house. Oh, it's really weird that you've got mod in my chat if you're new, but welcome in. It's good to see you. I'm real mad that there's not an op code at E E E E. That's a missed opportunity. E. Yeah, illegal opcodes, uh, that basically means uh, it was not one of the original intended instructions. Uh, often they end up doing something more complex. It's true, Eve does have a nice ring to it, but consider if uh, there were just a few no ops, which this developer was not shy about using, we could have had both Eve and E. with the accumulator. Looks like it's probably the same. Your page X, absolute X, Y, indirect X, Y. Sweet. You get to once again, just like, going. Cycle count for SL level five six six seven seven eight eight. Love it. Pop goes. Two seven. Seventeen. O F one F. One B. Two three one. Shift left means we are shifting left into carry. Except that we use four, but I don't think that four impacts carry. Fine. 
we have performed war. For a cool. operand, operand is not an address. Perfect. A does not set carry. Perfect. Meant to be impacting. Negative, zero, and carry. So I did carry, and now... Negative zero. Okay, cool. I think that that... I was gonna say that I think that that should do it, but, uh, something's broke. As we get past EE10, I'm happy. Ooh. We're still on SLO, so I think we're probably not going to have anything break just yet. 80% of the way through this run log. I'm pretty happy about that. So we can get to an even 85, F1, A1. RLA. So we're probably going to crash again here because I haven't implemented RLA yet. the RLA right there. So RLA. It's rotate left and, and accumulator with me. Okay. Your page X, absolute XY, indirect XY. Great. Once again, I get to just yoink. Imagine if the emulator crashed so hard the stream died. I mean, that would be impressive, especially given that uh, the... Um... That the emulator is, is being written inside of a VM itself. Am I planning on eventually emulating video output to a window? Well, yes. Uh, presently, this is a CPU emulator. CPUs themselves aren't going to be... Uh, producing too terribly much in terms of uh, visual output. Once we have PPU emulation, um, and that's going to be when we're moving closer into the emulating an NES, a full NES system uh, domain, at that point we'll end up with some video output. Honestly, one or two streams are probably going to be dedicated just to me learning how to do any sort of visual um, like visual programming at all. I've literally never done it.
what you're seeing here is pretty much how I've always done programming um, in terms of like I, I'm I I, I like <laughs> I do back end programming when I do programming or I do you know infosec related shit or stuff like that stuff where I'm never ever producing a pretty picture that's for talented people to do that's not me You, you want somebody who's, like, pretty okay at, like, twiddling bits and figuring out. Patterns between shit, stuff like that. I'm kind of okay at that. You want somebody who's going to make a pretty picture? Get anybody but me. Keep that here. Don't bite. I'm not going to be setting negative just yet because there's going to be an and if we do. We do set carry. Zero will happen after the hand. It is just a hand operand. Operand is already a bite. Grid of color letters to a terminal window. I mean, Stan, don't don't tempt me. I that's the sort of bullshit that I would definitely consider doing. Uh, carry was not supposed to be set. Interesting. RLA is rotate left. 
one's wine. Rotate left. No, I'm just... I don't know how to read, apparently. True, reading is the gateway to writing. And if we could do both of those things, then nothing could stop us. Sweet. In RLA territory. F2, FO is going to be the next crash. I'll go ahead and hey, there's a crash. S R E. Watch shift right, and then exclusive or. Hey, we've got the same. You still can't get 120 rows out of a terminal at 1440p on your default size. I'm actually not sure if I can either. Probably not. Wait, 140, 120 rows? Almost certainly not. I can get exactly 80 rows on my 1440, well, it's ultra wide, so it's not 1440p, but 1440 vertical pixels. What's I doing? It's implementing SRE. Come 
What were you? Arithmetic or were you? Awesome. Logical. of war got an off brand in it so memory address yeah i mean technically it's still 1440 and it is still progressive but you know what i mean because wait no wait yes yes sorry 47 yeah is you're gonna be 77 57 yeah 50 f 50 b 43 Still on SRE territory. RRA. Here's going to be our next crash. F560. Let's go ahead and get started with this. RRA. Rotate right in memory, then add memory to a few more. With care. Rotate right, then ADC. Six six seven seven eight eight. Man, these these compound instructions are amazing. Really like it because I don't even have to care about crossing page boundaries. Six seven 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 six F seven F. Yep. Seven B. Yep. 373 We are rotate right, which I think is ROR. So double check ROR, make sure that we are doing flag, uh, doing carry stuff. So. 
Then we're doing an ADC after that, so I don't even have to care about carry in here. ADC is, again, it's a literal operand, it's not a memory address. I think this should not crash. Demonta, how's it going? Z Clown, what is the 6502? It's a 8-bit CPU that was used in a bunch of electronics. Um, in this case, we're using uh, the Famicom. That's our... as our uh, ultimate target. Okay. Okay. Let's jump to the end of RRA and jump further. Uh, interesting. We might just go to C66E. That was unexpected. I was admittedly planning on quitting a little bit earlier than I did. Um, might have finished this verification. Yeah. Yeah, we got to the point where, um, We, we don't we don't have any breaks in in the running log. Well, this is a great place to end the stream because uh, now I'm gonna have to learn how to do I don't know SDL probably. I'll probably learn SDL. It's probably that's that's the next step. It's time to think about the PPU. So. Yeah. Um, so at this point, we have a working, fairly complete, um, including illegal opcodes, um, 6502 emulator. It is relatively accurate. It is uh, cycle accurate as long as I didn't screw up setting the cycle count for any of these instructions. So that's, that's pretty cool. That's a nice start. Um, like I said, the next step and the next tech stream that I do is probably going to be if some dumb idiot learns how SDL works at all. So that'll be fun. Um, don't expect performant SDL from me because I've never touched it before. I've never done graphical programming at all before. Uh, but yeah. Went a couple hours longer than I originally planned on it, but super duper worth it.